would now like to call upon the finalist enterprises for the elevator pitch. Uh, may we begin with Level Field School, please? Thank you. Uh, Level Field School seeks to build great quality uh, schools in smaller towns. Uh, though we say affordable yet great quality schools. But the focus is not really on affordability, it's, it's more on access because these kind of locations do not have great quality educational institutions. And uh, within, uh, we have built one school till now in uh, West Bengal. Uh, I, I come from the same town myself. I know that uh, uh, though, though eventually I managed to go to IIT Kharagpur, I, I know there are plenty of people who probably possessed similar talent but probably didn't make it, uh, make it that much. Uh, so we wanted to provide a level playing field for people of those locations so that uh, they could do well in future. Uh, within, within a year of uh, launching the school, we have really created genuine hope in the community that their, their children could do, do well. Uh, within a year of launching the school, the kids who could not even read a sentence in English now can read, you know, 40-50 page books. Uh, our school has been ranked in the top 10 in the uh, one nationalized testing asset. So uh, it has already made a great impact and we, we are looking to replicate that impact over many other towns in future. Thanks. outbound training and adventure travel organization. Uh, our vision is to evolve adventure as the most effective learning tool and revive the spirit of adventure among people from all walks of life and be environment cognizant. The current market size uh, is estimated around 670 crores and is growing at a rate of 25%. The target customers range in the group of 9 to 65, uh, accounting to 141 million uh, people across India. Adventure provides an opportunity to work in unfamiliar terrains, increase ability and appetite for taking risk, uh, explore self-potential, work as a team in difficult uh, conditions, and be environmentally aware. India is growing younger, and we believe that adventure will help in engaging the minds and building character and make India a powerhouse of resourceful people. Thank you. I'm Neelav Shah from Bookbox. Um, as you must have seen in the video, um, we create animated stories for children. And we add a concept called same language subtitling to that so that it, it gives subconscious reading practice. So just to give you an example, this is an animated story. We have... We have made stories in 30 different languages and we have reached out to 200,000 children. We hope to take this on television and once we have this on TV and on mobile phones, we should be able to reach close to 100 million children. Thank you. Hello, I'm Naveen and uh, I present uh, Sudhisha Knowledge Solutions. Uh, here we have it's a mission uh, to provide a quality education to the children in the rural areas uh, where 250 you know, million population are there at the bottom of the pyramid. So presently we have uh, five chain of schools in uh, rural Andhra Pradesh and um, also very small schools. Uh, you know, we, we don't have you know, a big infrastructure also and um, uh, we are uh, trying to you know, replicate uh, you know, similar schools in the other areas as well. And, um, I uh, hope uh, we really you know when this award, uh, which will you know make our dreams come true, and especially the rural area, you know the children uh, dreams come true. Thank you. Good morning, friends. I'm Agnello Rajesh Athaide here, representing Saint Angelo's Computer Education. Uh, we are into computer education for the last 18 years, focusing on the middle class and the lower middle class segment of the society. Uh, cost of education has always been a major hurdle in skill-based education uh, compared to engineering education or medical education. Computer education is very economical and it can really bring in good glory not only to the student but also to the entire family and society at large. Uh, with the help of innovation and technology, we now intend that the, since the systems are in place, we have trained more than 300,000 students in the last 18 years. 
With the help of innovation and technology, we would like to penetrate into all parts of the country, especially villages. As it is said that India is a land of villages, and we would like to reach every aspect of the country with the help of technology. That is where we are looking out for investing partners who can take the systems to every corner of the country. Thanks a lot. Good day. Thank you and all the best. Uh, may I now call upon state Mr. Atreya Raya Prolu, the co-founder of IntelliCap, to present a brief overview of the education sector. Uh, she's mentioned brief twice, so I'll keep it really brief and I, uh, I do want to get back to the audience and listen to the panel myself. Uh, the purpose of the presentation here is not to give you a sector overview, but to essentially set the context of the panel itself. So I'll keep it really, really short because we have a really eminent panel here and they're uh, already uh, well prepared to actually take it forward without a context. So while the, the slide itself shows you, I mean, it takes you back into history really, but uh, uh, what we were trying to say here is that uh, the Indian education system has actually traditionally or historically actually been uh, very lightest in nature. Uh, whether it be related to the caste system or whether it be related to the structures that we have laid out for the education system itself in the country. Uh, and uh, we have found it very hard to actually break away from that system. And uh, it still remains very, very selective in nature, at least the delivery of quality education at uh, cost that the population can afford has been uh, very, very selective. And that's the point being made here. We have had the uh, bottom of the pyramid uh, literally lack access to education and basically the top of the pyramid uh, move out to the country in search of uh, better pastures and uh, we have really had uh, uh, lack of access to education as one of the major issues driving the sector. Again, uh, uh, while this uh, slide shows you, shows you the broad breakdown of the different subsectors within education, uh, broadly I would just like this to be classified as the formal and the non-formal. And uh, the section that you see here at the left is, represents the core education sector, which actually uh, can uh, represent more than 75% of the market size, really. Uh, unfortunately, what we have seen is uh, a lot of uh, private uh, sector play and a lot of innovation and a lot of uh, delivery uh, in the recent past happened in the non-formal sector and not in the formal core sector of uh, K-12 and higher education as well. And uh, uh, a section of the market believes that the reason why we've seen a lot of growth in the non-formal sector is also because of the failure of the formal sector to deliver quality education and have it uh, accessible to the mass markets. Uh, so uh, what we're trying to do here is also to find out if there are solutions to address this issue. Uh, I'll keep it really brief, uh, so we also want to evaluate if regulations have been prohibitive, if regulations have been restrictive in nature, and uh, uh, while people can actually go through some of what's been given in the slide, I think the key message in the slide is, can we actually have government and the regulations play a role which is uh, catalyzing in nature rather than restrictive? Uh, a couple of solutions that have been uh, represented in this slide, I mean, can the private sector join hands with the government and can we have a model where the government actually represents the supply side of education, providing the infrastructure, where the private sector can actually play the role of providing the service itself, thus enhancing the quality of education. Uh, second, even uh, outside of the government schools, even in the, all the ancillary models, can private sector by itself play a role? And we have seen that the legal form or the regulatory nature of education has actually been restrictive. Can that be changed and is there scope for change there moving uh, forward in the future? And can private sector play a much larger role? Uh, as soon as we have the private sector play, I mean there's already a lot of private capital which is flown in into the education sector. But uh, it's only been lately in the last four to five years or a little more that we have seen a lot of private equity come in into the private sector, into the education sector, uh, enabling scale, efficiency, and lower costs of delivery. Uh, and uh, access to education at the lower end of the pyramid. So uh, on one side, we do know that uh, private equity can enable a more efficient delivery of education. It can bring in quality, and it can bring in scale. Uh, at the same time, can we take uh, uh, lessons from some of the other industries 
other other sectors where uh, the government has played a very large role and uh, where uh, the service or the products have been put and uh, come to any conclusions if any. Uh, Govind. take two minutes to introduce uh, the panel here. Uh, we have Mr. Govindraj Nethiraj, uh, who is the Head of Industry Outreach, Unique Identification Authority of India. Mr. Govindraj is an eminent financial journalist and former founder editor-in-chief at Bloomberg TV. He is currently on a sabbatical and working with the Planning Commission of India. Uh, on the panel, we have Mr. Gopal Jain, uh, founder and MD of Gaja Capital Partners. Um, Gopal is one of the few people who started investing as a hobby. Soon enough, his hobby turned into profession. Since 1995, he has made nearly 25 investments in companies that have grown to become sector leaders. We have Mr. Vishal Vashish, founder and MD of Song Investment Advisors, a company focused on investing in the SME space with a larger vision to catalyze socio-economic development of India. We have Mr. Akhil Shahani, Ms. MD Kaizen Global. Akhil has experience in startup management, education institute, setup, and operations. We have Mr. Shantanu Prakash, CEO and MD, Educom Solutions. Shantanu founded Educom with a vision to transform the teaching learning experience through the use of technology. Uh, we have Ms. Lena Usher, who's a global pioneer in children's education, uh, uh, and also the chairperson in can of Kangaroo Kids. Kangaroo Kids uh, is a leading education change that is changing the way kids learn today. Recently, Education World Magazine recognized her as one of the top leaders redefining Indian education. Over to you. Thank you. I'd like to uh, first of all thank the organizers for having me over. Uh, quick uh, caveat. Um, uh, well, you may want to, all of you, my panelists, may want to pile on to government for various things. Uh, do leave me out of it. I'm not here in my official capacity. So, uh, uh, I think we've uh, we've had a bit of an interesting discussion already in the, in the on the sidelines, but I'm sure you want to participate in it. So we're talking about two or three things today. I think we're, one is we're trying to see what is the role of the private sector in education. I think we all know that private capital has played a significant role, but the nature of private capital itself has changed and is changing further. Uh, I.e., we're seeing the entry of or entrants uh, like private equity. Uh, second is, uh, if uh, I mean, we saw some very interesting uh, uh, elevator pitch presentations made, uh, and heartening to see such uh, uh, efforts being made. And I think it's important that uh, the industry as a whole uh, maintain and create a smooth functioning environment wherein uh, such entrepreneurs and efforts are encouraged, and uh, someone doesn't do something which causes the entire uh, sector to blow up, and which is. Uh, sometimes likely to happen when you have too many smart people coming into it. So I always feel that, you know, I've seen it in finance and so many other sectors, when you have very smart people coming in, it means that there's good news because they will find ways to uh, deliver the product more efficiently, build scale, all of which perhaps the government couldn't do. Uh, but the flip side is that uh, when there's private capital backing it, the tendency to look for uh, sharper returns may force you to do things at a pace which perhaps the, the sector cannot bear. And when it's something as sensitive as education, uh, you need to be very careful about it. So what we're obviously going to conclude is that how do you do that so as to ensure that this sector grows and becomes more vibrant rather than say that how do we uh, prevent it from growing. So I think that's the, the second question. The third